Okay. Today is the fourth and the last Sunday of the blessed month of... Uh, the fourth and the last Sunday of the blessed month of... Yes, exactly. And during this month, the church divided the first chapter of the gospel according to our teacher St. Luke into four sections, each to be read on one of the Sundays of uh, the month of Kiyak. So on the first week, on the first Sunday, we read uh, from Luke 1, 1 to 25, which is about announcing the conception of St. John the Baptist, his father, Zechariah the priest. And on the second Sunday, we read from Luke 1 again, but from verses 26 to 38, which is about announcing the birth or the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ to his mother, St. Mary. On the third Sunday, we read again from Luke 1, but verses 39 to 56. And this is about St. Mary visiting her old cousin, uh, Elizabeth, who was found to be with a child. And today, which is the last Sunday, or the fourth Sunday, we read from Luke 1, verses 57 until the very end, which is 80. And this gospel is about what? Today's gospel is about? The birth of our Lord Jesus... Uh, I'm sorry. The birth of St. John the Baptist. Forgive me. So, if you ever were asked during any week or any Sunday of the month of Kiak, where what would be the liturgy gospel reading, you will say automatically from Luke 1, regardless. Okay? So let us remember this. So today, the gospel is about the birth of St. John the Baptist, of whom the Lord said, Among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Wow, that's, that's something very impressive. Among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. Why is that? The Lord said this in Matthew 11:11. 11, 11. Why is that? Why was John the Baptist described as being the greatest among those born of women? And why God chose him to be the forerunner? Do you mean the meaning of the word forerunner? He was the one who went before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Why was all this? Why was he that great? Because as a matter of fact, he was adorned with many virtues that we all need to learn in order to grow spiritually and qualify to be servants of the Most High. Such as what? What are these virtues? We are going to talk about three virtues that we can notice in the life of St. John the Baptist. And these virtues we all need to learn in order to qualify to be servants of the Lord. Number one, the virtue of humility. David, in Psalm 50, we read Psalm 50 every time from the book of Agbia whenever we start praying of any of the hours. So in Psalm 50, what did David say? The, the sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. And you remember when we spoke of St. Mary? Just as God chose St. Mary, this poor little orphan, to be the mother of his only begotten son because of humility, and this humility was manifested in her silence, in her submission, in her services. Do you recall that? Do you recall any of that? Just because St. Mary was chosen because of her humility, for the same reason God also chose uh, St. John the Baptist. St. John was a Levite. Do you know the meaning of the word Levite? Do you know the meaning of that word? He was uh, from the tribe of uh, Levi. What does that mean? Those uh, Levites were in charge of serving the temple. And like his father, he could have become a priest. And at that time, priests could have made a very decent life. He could have lived a luxurious life without having to labor anything. But instead, he preferred to live in the wilderness. And not just that, he lived in the wilderness clothed with camel's hair, and he ate locusts and wild honey. That's all what he ate. I don't think it seems very delicious. Locusts, wild, wild honey, and he wore 
or he was clothed in camel's hair. He was never interested in any title, in any possessions or pleasures of this world. And this was a manifestation of his humility and simplicity. This probably reminds us with one of our saints, of our recent saints, who is Amba Braham. Do you remember or do you know Amba Braham? Mm -hmm. Amba Braham, he was the bishop of Al-Fayyum and Giza during the 19th century. And he was very, very righteous and a charitable man. He lived the poor so dearly and he served them so fervently, always preparing banquets for them to make sure they all ate and were satisfied. At the same time, while they ate, he himself fasted, abstaining from food for long hours, probably up until 6 or 7 p.m. But uh, he instructed the cook not to prepare any special food for himself. He told him whatever prepared for the poor, for the brethren of Christ, I will eat from. So please do not prepare any special food for me. But once he discovered something that he never liked. He discovered that the meals served to the bishop were different, were of a better quality than the food served to the poor. He became sorrowful and he ended up firing this cook and he replaced him with someone else. Tomorrow, God willing, or probably on Tuesday, in two days, we are celebrating a great feast. The feast of... The feast of nativity. the feast of nativity, exactly. We are celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ in our Orthodox Church. And during that feast, people usually eat the most delicious and wear the most expensive, the most precious. But let us remember this. When the Lord Jesus Christ was born, where did he choose to be born? In a palace? In a mansion? No, he was born in a? In a manger, not in a mansion, exactly. He was born in a manger, and he was surrounded by animals and shepherds and very simple and poor people. So please try to celebrate. I, I, I'm, I'm not asking you not to eat or not to wear new clothes, but whenever we do this, let us do this reasonably. Let us celebrate in simplicity and spiritually. Because by doing this, we choose to be among the shepherds who gather to welcome the Lord baby, baby Jesus. And as we saw in St. Mary, and as we saw in St. John the Baptist, the Lord dwells only in humble hearts. If you are planning to brag about something, the Lord will depart from you. And He's going to leave you to your arrogance. So, number one, why was St. John the Baptist chosen to be called the greatest of those born of women? Number one, because of his humility. Exactly. The second thing is his courage. Because of his faith and his lack of interest in any of the vain glory, he was very brave in declaring the truth. When Herod, do you remember Herod the king? When Herod broke the law by getting married to his brother's wife. His brother was a governor, but Herod put him in prison and he got married to his, uh, to his wife, who was called Herodia. But St. John the Baptist, because Herod did something against the law of Moses, he stood before him and very bravely and very uh, um, openly, he rebuked him without any fear. It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And was this good for St. John the Baptist himself? As a matter of fact, no, because Herodia hated him. And she plotted to kill him. That took place actually on the king's birthday. And St. John the Baptist became the first martyr in the gospel after the children of Bethlehem. So when we read the gospel, we'll find that the first who were martyred, the children of Bethlehem. And after them was St. John the Baptist, the first to be martyred by the hand of Herod. And by this, he inspired many of those who eventually 
shed their blood for the sake of their faith. Do you recall? Today in the Cynic Star, we read about a saint whose name was, huh? Do you recall? What was her name? Saint Anastasia, exactly. Saint Anastasia was a young lady. And despite being a young lady, she was a Christian and she was steadfast in her faith. What is it that she did? She challenged the cruelty of her pagan father and husband. She was fearless. And she secretly visited the Christian prisoners to attend and provide for their needs. Even when the governor knew of her account and he tortured her severely, she was not shaken. Up until she delivered up her pure soul when she was hung on a cross with fire lit under her, just like our Lord Jesus Christ. Nowadays, we tend to do one of two things. When the fast ever comes, we tend to neither fast at all, we wouldn't fast, or if we were fasting, we tend to hide our fasting from co-workers and uh, school uh, mates and stuff like that. Why? Because if we told them that we are fasting, if we told them that we are Christians from the Coptic Church, they may start mocking us. They may start making fun of what we say or what we do. Why are you fasting? Well, the food is delicious and it is a gift from God. Why don't you eat with us? They may start at treating you with some sort of discrimination. But let us remember that St. John the Baptist was described as being the greatest among those born of women because of his uh, courage. And those who deny their faith in Christ, those who deny their faith in Christ before men, will be denied eventually on the last day before God the Father and his angels. Let us be cautious. Number one, his... What? Number one, his humility. Number two, his... uh, courage exactly and the third thing is which is a little bit hard and we may all face something like this his faithfulness you know what Kirullus Mina Mark would you please sit up okay his humility his courage and finally his faithfulness What about his faithfulness? St. John obeyed the divine call to preach and to baptize. He did this, as we said, in self-denial. He wasn't looking for any title. He wasn't looking for any acknowledgement or recognition or anything like that. He did this with all zeal and dedication. But when the Lord Christ began his uh, ministry. What is it St. John did? He kept repeating, I'm not the Christ. When anyone asked him, are you the Christ? He said, no, I'm not the Christ. But I have been sent before him. He kept saying this on and on and on all the time. He never claimed something that was not his. When the Lord Jesus Christ began his ministry, what happened? Many people, many of the followers of John the Baptist, including his own disciples, departed from him and followed Christ. How does that feel like? Does that feel great? At that time, he should have felt like uh, jealous, sorrowful. My friends and my disciples are departing from me and they're following Christ. But as a matter of fact, he was neither jealous nor sorrowful. He was not angry at all. Let us hear what he said. He said about the Lord, He must increase, but I must decrease. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Can you imagine? He was even joyful by what's going on. Let me ask you a question. If a friend of yours, if one of your friends, needed help with math or reading or whatsoever, would you be willing to do this? without a reward, without even a word of thank you? Would you be happy to do that? Even worse, what if your friend whom you have helped got higher grades than you in the STAR test? Would you still be happy? It's hard for so many people to help others. 
And it's even harder to see those whom we helped are getting better and improving even above we do. But St. John the Baptist was joyful about this. He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. So, if we are really serious about serving the Lord, we want to be his servants. If we really need to grow spiritually, so we need to learn these three qualities, these three virtues. We need to learn humility. We need to learn to be courageous in declaring our faith. And also we need to learn to be faithful in doing everything. Everything, all what we do, when we study, when we play, when we come to church, during the Sunday school, during the hymns classes, we need to take everything seriously. And we need to be willing to help others out preaching to them. And even when they get better, we don't get sorrowful, but we get joyful. Glory be to our God forever and ever.